So, hello everyone, and welcome to this PowerSys webinar. So, uh, for a bit of context, let me first introduce you uh, to PowerSys. We are a global electrical engineering software and services provider offering fully customized solutions to help our customers solve their complex electrification challenges in EV and grid. Our solution includes electrical engineering expertise, simulation software, and power computing. For more than 20 years now, PowerSys has been delivering its expertise to thousands of customers all around the world. And in 2023, it acquired Simba, the new generation simulation software for power electronics. During today's webinar, we will be exploring the power of Simba and Python in power electronics simulation. So it is my pleasure to introduce and give a warm welcome to our speaker for today, Adrien Michel. Adrien received his engineering degree in energy in 2015. He has been working at PowerSys since 2016 and is taking care of Simba support. Lastly, all questions will be answered during the Q&A session at the end of this webinar. You will also receive a short questionnaire at the end of this session. So we thank you in advance for all of you who will take the time to give us their feedback. This is very useful to us um, for better develop our webinars. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Adrien. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar about the use of Simba and Python in power electronics. So, as uh, Stephanie said, I am the power electronics uh, lead application engineer for the Europe zone at PowerSys. So, I guess some of you know me already. And today I'm going to present you this webinar and I hope it will be very useful uh, in the future for you, for Simba and for your Python use. So here we are. I will present you the agenda of today. So I will basically introduce you Simba. What is Simba? basically in a few words. Then I will present you uh, the second part about uh, why do you, we need to use advanced scripting for power electronic simulation and for power converter design. And then we will show you how the AESIM.Simba Python library can help you to write your own script in order to design and run any power electronic simulation. But I will also present you in the fourth part, the, Py the use of Python uh, in a generic way. What is Python and how it can help you to achieve your goal. And then we will present, I will present you three case studies in order to combine both Simba and the uh, Simba Python library, which has been developed in order to show you uh, some sketches about the semiconductor comparison, about the power train efficiency map, and also how to design your own LLC uh, converters, LLC resonant power converters. And at the end, I will present you uh, the, the, the roadmap and also make a quick conclusion. And if you have any question at the end, feel free to ask me and I will answer you. So let's start with Simba. So what is Simba, basically? Simba is a new power electronic simulation software uh, with an unprecedented speed, accuracy, and simplicity. So Simba has been uh, released two years ago on the market, more or less two years ago. And as you can see on the screen, you can see the, the GUI, the graphical user interface of, uh, the, of Simba. On the left side, you, are, you have the main design part and on the right side, you have the result part. So as you can see, the, the, the GUI is quite clean, clear, you don't have extra button and it's quite easy to use. And in a few minutes, you can uh, use Simba and and understand how it works. And basically, its a uh, solver. Uh, he is giving you a very amazing speed because it uses a predictive time step solver. So basically, on this slide, 
we want to show you how Simba could be useful in the normal design of a power electronic simulation uh, process. Okay, so basically, when you want to design a power converter, you need to go in the first phase, which is the uh, pre-design, which is called the system design, in which you are going to um, select the topology. You can make some variant. You can change your topology because maybe it, it will not fit your needs. And you can make a quick comparison of which topology you need to use in order to, to meet your requirement. And then, based on the topology, you can make some uh, power quality um, simulation. You can also make some thermal analysis in order to estimate the losses and calculate at the end the efficiency, the efficiency of your inverter, your efficiency of your motor, maybe, and also of your motor drive system entirely. And uh, also, you can make some extra uh, simulation. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, predict the lifetime of your uh, semiconductors, if you make some reliability simulation and system integration and so on. And the second step, when you, when you have done the first step, you need to go in the, into the control design in which you are going to make your control loop, your control, your control stage of your power converters. For example, you are going to um, make some frequency analysis. This is called the AC analysis in which you are going to plot the body diagram, the body plot in order, in open loop, in order to uh, calculate the PID, for example, values, and close the loop of your uh, system. You can make some stability simulation by using some uh, Nyquist uh, criteria, for example. And you can design your own controller by using a C block, by using the C code capability, and also make your control of your drive, of your motor. And Simba will be useful for those two first steps, the system design and the control design. So if you want to go into this uh, process of power electronic simulation, you will always need to use a simulation software. And then Simba could be the right software for you. And of course, this process is not restricted to those two first steps. You need also to go into the I mean uh, EMI uh, parts, because you will need to design your own EMI filter. You will need to test your EMI filter and also make some EMI analysis in order to uh, get the value of the noises and so on. And check if your uh, filter is uh, is passing your test, for example. And you will also need to design your own gate driver and even make your own PCB in order to bridge your own uh, card for prototyping at the end. You will need also to go into the magnetic design parts if you want to um, make some FEA analysis, some finite element analysis simulation. You will need to define the geometry of your magnetic design, and you will need to select also the materials. So you have to take into account some aspects of those parts. And at the end, you can make your own prototype and test it by using the capability to generate the code, to make some hardware in a loop simulation, processor in a loop simulation, uh, motor in loop simulation, and power hardware simulation in loop. So basically, Simba actually is not going into those three last parts, but we will plan in the coming weeks, months, and years to fill in all those process with uh, some partners and also with our developed because we are the developer of Simba. So we will uh, incorporate, we will add those new features in, uh, in, in Simba. 
And the use of map partner could be also very important for us because they have already some technology and we can incorporate their technology into our Simba technology in order to, to, to build a complete solution for your electrification needs. So, and one thing which different with we which different traced us is um, Simba could be useful and could be used in different ways. The first way the way is to use a Simba desktop. So basically, you will need to have a computer, and you can launch directly Simba. Simba doesn't need to be installed. You can just launch the application, the exe file, and then you will need, you can directly use Simba like this without any installation. You have also the capability to use uh, Simba only with a Python library because uh, the, the, the software has been encapsulated into the Python library module, in fact. So you, if you want, you can use Simba without have it in your computer. Just use the iosim.simba Python library, and then uh, you can go through the capabilities of the Python script. And last thing is the Simba online, which is uh, a version on web. So you need to have an internet connection, and you can make some quick simulation, quick uh, selection of topology, for example, and you can get and retrieve result very quickly. And the online version is very, is very useful for professor, for uh, for teacher and and student. So. You have three ways to use Simba. So you can choose any ways and you can use Simba in those three different ways if you want. In you, if in your process you need to use sometimes the desktop version or sometimes the, the, Pit, the Python version if you want if you want to make some uh, parallel simulation, if you want to automate and go very quickly. So you have here the desktop version. You have the online version at the bottom, and in the right hand side, you have the Python library capability. So what you can do is in, in the Simba desktop could be redo in Python uh, with the Python library, and even more. So here I will just describe very quickly and not go into the all the features, but you have here the main features of Simba. So first, we do have a first class simulation engine for transient analysis and uh, IC analysis. We have a multi-time step solver, which is mainly used for digital simulation. We have also added the, the capability to, to stop the simulation when the steady state is rich. So you will save your time because you don't need to simulate during three, four, or 10 seconds because the software itself will stop when the steady state has been detected. We have a comprehensive and rich uh, multi-physics library if you want to use some electrical component, if you want to use some mechanical component as well, if you want to make some thermal uh, analysis, for example, and if you want to make your control uh, stage in order to close the loop, for example. We have uh, some detailed motor models. We, You can also use the C code um, capability and also debug it yourself, yourself because we have uh, integrated a compiler inside Simba, so you can build and write your own code manually and debug it uh, by putting some breakpoint at any point, at any lines, and check what is going on um, at each lines. If you get some error, you can understand why thanks to the debug part. You can also make some thermal analysis in order to estimate the losses, the conduction and switching losses. You can also calculate the junction temperature as well. You can also make some efficiency analysis thanks to the thermal one, and you can import some XML uh, thermal file for thermal parts. I will 
just go I will talk about this part a bit later and make some AC uh, sweep analysis I mean frequency analysis uh, in open loop in order to uh, get the PI value for example and close the loop of your system so let me show you quickly the Simba uh, GUI so once you open Simba you will get the main page of the GUI which is the uh, design in fact uh, page where you can select one of the pre-designed pre-existing example okay and you have the library tab in which you are going to select if I want to use a transformer, uh, an IGBT, a MOSFET, if you want to use a PWM and so on. So you will need just to drag and drop any component into the canvas and selecting the component and modify its own parameters in order to tune it and tick each of those boxes in order to once the simulation is done, you can go directly into the uh, result parts and observe those losses, for example. But if I want, I can directly go into the bug step down converter, uh, modify the, if I want, of course, the solver type. If you want, you can use fix or predictive. So predictive will be the fattest one because it will be a variable time step, which would change accordingly based on the minimum time step here. You can also stop the steady state. Uh, you can also use this functionality to stop the simulation when the steady state is reached. And once the simulation is done, for example, I want to display both current and voltage uh, of the load, the resistance, you can go into the result tab here and you can directly check the voltage uh, through the current, through the resistance and the voltage across the, re the, the same resistance. And you can merge if you want both curves, you can add some vertical lines in order to get the minimum, maximum, average RMS uh, value directly here. You can add a new, ch a new chart and check the current through the inductance as well. And you can make some zoom capability like this. So, we have the result tab in order to observe the results. This is for the post-processing part. We have the design part when you are going to build to design your own power converters and the test bench part in which you can directly make some parameter sweep analysis if you want to sweep one or more parameters during the simulation and check the impact of the modification of the parameter for your measurement and the frequency analysis in order to check the, uh, the, the magnitude, the phase and, uh, and angle. So you can do all of those um, simulation here and also you can import any thermal data that you have uh, obtained from uh, semi manufacturer of semiconductors. So this is the main interface of Simba. So let's go now to the uh, main, to the slide. So what's new in Simba? So here I have just put the main information that we, we have uh, added for the year 2023. Uh, so basically, we have added this new multi time step solver, okay, which is not the predictive, which is not the predictive time step solver, which is another type of solver for digital uh, simulation, okay. So we have also added the Simba online version if you want to use Simba with the web, with internet, with Google, basically. Uh, we have uh, added and improved the DFT uh, calculation for discrete Fourier uh, transform. We have also improved the motor models if you want to use a saturation of motor, 
basically you can do that now in order to get uh, more real components and we have added also more than 20 uh, new models 20 components uh, inside the library and as you know uh, we have a, a roadmap which is public so any one of you of the future users of Simba can bring, if I can say that, their own touch. Basically, if you want to add any new features, any new component, you can make a request on a GitHub website. So I can share with you the link uh, later. And if you have any requests, if you have any needs, you can contribute, contribute to uh, improve Simba by adding, for example, I would like to have this kind of component. I would like to get these new features in Simba. So then we will study it and we will uh, check if we can directly build it in few days or weeks or if we need more times. But anyway, the goal of Simba is to have a software based and for your needs. Okay, we need to have a software which is matching your entire needs. So anytime you need to have a new features, a new request, okay, new model, feel free to go on GitHub and add your own comment. And then we will add it into the roadmap of Simba in order to build the functionality. So that's very interesting because I don't know if one of existing software is doing this in on this way. So we we want to rely on our customer, on our users in order to improve and make software dedicated entirely to your needs. Um, perfect. So now, I just want to to explain you why do we need to use advanced scripting in power electronic simulation or in simulation in general. But in our case, we are talking about power electronics, power converter design. So that's why I have we have focused this presentation in power converters design. So I talk generally. Okay, maybe you have a, a process which is slightly different, but most of the time our customers use this kind of process, this kind of way in order to design your own power converters. So first stage is the preliminary design in which you are going to first think about which specification you need to uh, use. For example, let's say I want to build a power converters with, with this kind of rating voltage, with this kind of rating power. So basically, based on the specification, you are going to open an Excel file. Maybe you are go you're going also to use a simulation software. And into the Excel file, you are going to make your own mathematical uh, equation. You are going to make your own theory. Okay, and based on the values that you have calculated, you are going to build your power converters in a simulation software in order to check if your uh, in order to check if the simulation is matching more or less the Excel sheet. Okay, but this, of course, you need in order to do, to do this work, you need to use data sheet. You need to read. And to get all the data sheet of your um, of your um, component, so by using the specification and the data sheet, you are going to make this kind of iteration work between Excel calculation, simulation, compare and check if the simulation um, is matching more or less the reality. Once it is done, you are you will need to go into the detailed design in which you are going to select the component because maybe you will see that during simulation, maybe the simulation is not optimum. Maybe the topology is not well chosen. Maybe you will need to select new component. And 
Also, you will need to design your own magnetics. You will maybe also need to create and to design and simulate your own um, cooling system and heating part. You will need maybe to also to create your own controller to write manually code and also to perform your PCB, to create your PCB. And once everything is done, you will need and you will be able to make your own prototype, as you can see on the picture on the right side here. And this work is very, uh, we call like labor intensive, because you will need to repeat any time if you have one modification. And if one day your specification are changed, because maybe you will need to adapt your system to maybe USA, location, maybe to India location, maybe to Europe and Asia location, you will need also to adapt to the voltage, to the frequency and so on. So basically, anytime you, you will have one modification, you will need to redo everything. And this is time consuming. And you can also make some human errors, errors because it's normal. You can make some error. Uh, because you have worked a lot of time into the project, you need to do something slightly different, and now you need to redo everything. So basically, this process could lead to uh, some mistakes, but this is in general what customers are doing. So we want to more or less skip this part by using our library. I call it library, but it is a module if you want. And this module is the iosim.simba. And this is a Python module that you can directly use in order to first design for you the converter in an assisted way. For example, you can say, okay, I want to make this kind of dual active bridge power converters. I need to use those components. Okay, first you can build it into Simba desktop or you can directly build it from scratch, from nothing. You, you will need to define the component. You will need to uh, rely each, um, you will need to, to, to add some connection, but everything will be done by scripting and once the script is done you don't need to modify it so this is why the python uh, module of simba could help you to to assist you to design converter in an automated way and also help you to design your own controller in a semi automated way because for example of course for the as it is scripting you need to write manually the script but you can use a lot of um, modules available in the market which are free uh, you can use um, module to to optimize your system you can also use predefined function in python which can help you to to fit your requirement but basically if you perform and if you write you on script, it can help you to run thousands of simulation, for example, in an automated way, just by just by by changing few parameters. That's why it can help you to design and to make your control in a semi-automated way by writing script and run it and modify it in a simple way. And you can avoid to make to make any mistake because only one or few parameters will be changed. And once you have done your design and your uh, control in your script, you can optimize it, as I told you, by using some uh, optimizer module, by using some your own algorithm. If you want to define and to create your own al algorithm, it's possible. And you can make also some parametric analysis, such as uh, sensitivity analysis, in order to know which parameter is the most sensitive for my for my measurement. You can also make some Monte Carlo analysis. You can make, in fact, statistical analysis by predefined module existing in the Python library. You can make also some stress analysis in order to check if the component is overstressed or not. Uh, 
you can do a lot of advanced simulation like this again in an automated way. And of course, you can at the end make some test case and check if and fault analysis, of course, you can do that. You can inject manually some fault. You can make some open circuit. You can make some short circuit analysis. You can uh, modify any parameters during the simulation at any point. So once you have done that, as I told you, you can make some test case and check if this fault or if this modification has impacted the overshoot of the system, the ripple, or maybe uh, if the current is not too high in my system. So you can do and make some reporting and create your own documentation. And then this report and documentation could be provided to your manager, to anyone else, which will work with you basically and everything again could be done manually and at the end re um, it will be it will be written manually in the script but if it will be generated automatically once the python script has been run so by using this iosim.simba python library you can redo uh, you can do all this uh, process, but not in manually way, I mean in an automated and semi-automated way, because the computer will do it for you. And also, as you know, when you use a traditional approach, you will need to have a lot of files, a lot of simulation files, a lot of data sheet, spreadsheet, you will need to use uh, some Excel file and so on. And every, everything will be done by one or more people and it can also lead to errors. So if you have some error because some file is missing because you cannot open this file due to version and so on, um, again, the capability of Simba and the Python help you to reduce the number of errors because you will need only to use two files. The first one, which will be the Simba project file in which you have created and designed your own power converters. If you have it, of course, if you have made your simulation file. And the second one is the Python script. Because again, as I told you, everything could be done in the Python script itself, the design the modification of parameters, the simulation, and the post-processing part in one file. But of course, most of the time, you have this gsimba file, which is a project file in which you have the power converters, and you have the Python script in order to run this gsimba file. And those two files, again, because you have only two files, you can reduce the number of errors error between all the people which will interact into the into the project and also you can version you can make some different script version for example version one for the reop norms version two for the asia and india norms and version three for the usa norm for example then you can make again some different variant because if one day you need to make and to change some uh, gate resistance, some switching frequency, and so on, you can have a lot of variant, a lot of version based on those modifications, and only few parameters will be changed. So one of the advantage is to, uh, to, to have the capability to have some version very quickly, and you can compare easily what has been done in the version one, what has been modified in the version two by using some extra free software. And you can say, okay, only this modification has been done in this version, and now I can understand why I get such result. And also, you can share very easily because two files could be exchanged between uh, you and your colleagues. So now, before to talk to you, the, to talk to you about the. Um, Python library in Simba uh, more deeply, I want to talk to you about Python, the basics. So what is Python and how to use it very quickly? So basically, Python 
as you maybe know, is an accessible and very powerful scripting language. First, um, Python is free. You can directly go into the python.org website and download it for free. Once you have uh, downloaded it, you can directly build and create your own simple script. Okay, so I will show you just this uh, after this slide. Um, it's very easy to learn. So Python is has a very clear and readable syntax. Okay, so it is quite similar to MATLAB uh, script. So if you have already any experience and knowledge on how to um, use a my and how to write a MATLAB script, Python will be quite close. And also, thanks to the very clear syntax, you can even for a beginner, okay, and non-programmer and non-user of um, of, of Python, you can understand, okay, this syntax is meaning this because you have few, uh, because the way it has been created is very simple with some equal sign and so on. So basically um, in few hours and in few days, you can learn in a very easy way to, to learn uh, Python. Also Python is very versatile. It means it is not only used for power tunics or motor design or I don't know or, or FEA simulation. It is used in all the domain. I mean, in a lot of domain, such as web development to analyze some data, in uh, in IT, in scientific computing, in AI, in artificial intelligence, and also, for example, in machine learning. If you want to train your own machine with a lot of simulation result extracted from Simba, you can do that. So Python is a language that you can use in a lot of domain. Also, it has a very uh, vast libraries and module. So it means you can use um, a lot of libraries for uh, mathematical. For example, if you want to make some mathematical, some numerical computation, you can use NumPy. NumPy very be useful for that. You can use matplotlib for data visualization. If you want to observe and if you want to plot your result in histogram, bar gram, uh, 3D view, and so on. If you make some violin uh, um, plot, uh, you can use NumPy, Matplotlib. You can use also Seaborn, Plotty. Uh, you can also use SciPy, um, SciPy I, 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 for um, I, I algorithm um, module. If you want to make some uh, smart and strong algorithm uh, for optimize, you can use this uh, SIP um, library. And all those modules are free because uh, they are Python and Python is open source. And also, as I told you before, Python could help you to automate. So you can uh, use Python to design your own power converters, to uh, to build some function that you can call a lot of times in your um, in your script, and it will just ease your life because in one button you can run the simulation and and everything will be done automatically and simply. So you can design you can run simulation you can make your uh, you can make your control you can visualize some data and export also your data in an excel file in any txt file and so on and make some reports so everything is automated um yes so how to get started first you need to go on the Python.org website. From there, you can directly download the Python uh, software and install it in your computer. You will have access to a lot of uh, examples, to a lot of tutorials, but they will be only linked to 
the usage of generic Python. And you need, most of the time, you will need to use an IDE, an integrated de development uh, environment, in order to edit your code, in order to run your code. So here at PowerSys, we use Visual Studio Code because it is an open source and it is free and quite easy to uh, take in hand. You can, again, uh, use Visual Studio and in a very few minutes, just open a Python file, a Python script, and just click on Run and it will uh, run the the, the Python script. And also you can use on our website, which is simba.io, if you want to have access to some documentation, uh, to the um, example, because we have created a lot of extra example, application example, and also uh, Python script and also tutorials. If you want to understand and uh, and check quickly how to use this this or this functionality in uh, in Ziba. We do have some video. We do have some clear and um, comprehensive uh, um, tutorials for that. So I will uh, directly show you how to use um, Python. So, for example, if you don't have any IDE, you can um, run and use the Python language only with a command prompt and or a txt file, a text file. For example, I have created, sorry for all this file, I have created a file name script.txt and inside these scripts, I have the, the, the syntax, thanks for joining this Simba webinar. Okay, so I will close it and I will open command prompt. And I will open this script by using the Python. So basically you need to go into, so I have put my file into the desktop. So basically you can go into your, uh, into the location where is located your, uh, your file, your script dot txt file so basically you just need to go open i mean to write script dot txt and click on enter and now it will directly open this file another way is if you reopened command line basically you can type python and here you will see the uh, the version of Python installed in your computer. Then you can say a is equal to two. Now, so this is a Python line syntax. Now you can say okay, a, and now it is equal to two. And also I can put print a, and now as you can see, if I click on enter, it is equal to two. So thanks to the Python language, you can build and make any test uh, by using command line, okay, command prompt. And also you can build and write your own Python script uh, inside your txt file and run it from command prompt again. But now I want to show you a simple example, which is a bit uh, more complex than what I have showed you. Um, basically, this example is nothing with Simba. It is only pure Python. It is basic Python. So you don't need to use Simba or anything to, to run it. Okay. You, this is just a, a script that I have written. Okay. With Python. So what I have done is I have imported two library, the NMP library for mathematical equation, as you can see here. I do some mathematical and numerical calculation, and I use also the matplotlib part in order to visualize and plot any curve. So in this, once you have imported the two libraries, you need to create your your own uh, syntax. So basically, we have we we create a variable which is called 
f and we assign a value of five. This is the frequency of the signal. Then we create two arrays, one array named x, which is sweeping, uh, in fact, uh, some value from zero to one with a step of one milli. This is, in fact, the time. And you have y. And y, which is just the sinus of two pi f and t. This is just the multiplication here, and you have the sinus of this. And here we are going to create the RMS and to sorry to calculate the RMS value by using this RMS uh, syntax here, and to print the result of the RMS. And at the end we are going to create a, a new figure, and we are going to plot x and y values. So. This is Visual Studio. This is the IDE that we use and that I use to use every day. So you can just click on Run, Run without debugging. And as you can see, we, are, we want to display RMS value of the signal. This is here at the bottom, RMS value of the signal. And we want to plot. And as you can see, my curve has been plot. The Y curve has been plot based on the x, based on the time, because it is sweeping from 0 to 1 with a step of 1 milli. So this is pure, uh, pure Python. OK. So now I will just go again into the next slide. So it was just a quick instruction of Python. So now I want to show you and to explain you how the iosim.simba Python library can be useful in your process, in your simulation. First, this Python library is very easy to install. You just need to go on command prompt and type pip install iosim.simba. And then the installation will be done and will be performed automatically and itself. Uh, the iosim.simba Python library is available on Windows, on Linux, and Mac. So actually, if you have this kind of OS, you can directly use this Python um, library inside this one. So this Python library is independent. It means you don't need to install Simba, or you don't need to have Simba open in order to use uh, the iosim.simba Python capability. OK, so you just need to have a Simba license, but you don't need to have Simba desktop installed. You can make some parallelization. You can make some multi-core simulation and cloud computing uh, simulation as well if you want. You can go into the Simba.io website if you want to have a, a clear explanation about the, the, the Python library and have the details of all the classes and uh, description of each functionalities. And we have a lot of examples available on GitHub. If you remember, GitHub is, is a platform where you can request any new features. And inside uh, GitHub, we have added a section, which is a Simba Python example. And you can download them for free, of course, because everything is free here. Uh, so, so you can download the zip directly, and you will have a lot of already pre-designed example Python script, which has been created by us in order to have a quick and accurate understanding about how to use uh, the Python uh, capability in Simba. So you can go into the GitHub and download, and download them. Um, Here, I just want to show you a super simple example of iosim.simba. So in this example, example, we are going to import the module, I mean the library, the iosim.simba library. And we are going to, in fact, import the classes that we want to use. In that way, we want to import the functionality design because we want to create a new design and inside the new design we want to create a new circuit so we add the line import design in order to import the classes which has been created and which is encapsulated into the iosim.simba module inside it okay we are going to 
give a name. Okay, we are going to create a design here, and we are going to give a name to this design, DCDC bug. In this design, we are going to add new uh, component because we need to add a new device in order to build your own circuit. So you are, we are going to add the voltage V1, which is called DC voltage source, and which has the uh, location X and Y. This is a geographical location, two and six, two for X and Y is six. And then the component will be placed at this location two, six, and maybe uh, a resistor load at, I don't know, eight, 10, and so on. You can modify the value of the voltage like this. You can modify any parameters. V1 dot voltage is equal to 50 volt, 50. You can make and change the setup uh, of your uh, transient analysis simulation. So the time step is equal to one micro. And you can run the simulation by adding a new job. And in this job, we are going to make a transient analysis. And we can also add the status. It means if you have any error on your, on your simulation, it will retrieve your error. It will also give you the simulation, the entire simulation time of your, uh, of your system. And uh, at the end, you can retrieve any result. You can observe the output voltage, which is R1. R1 uh, instantaneous voltage, thanks to this syntax, you can directly observe the voltage across the resistor load. And now I will reopen the uh, one of the existing example, which is the run simulation from the GitHub in order to show you how it works. So basically, if you open this example, which is a run simulation py, which is a Python extension file. Okay. Again, we are going to import the module iosim.simba in order to import all the design examples. And those design examples are all of them on the left side, as you can see here. This belong, those examples belong to the design example classes. So once you import the design example, you will import in background, in fact, all of those examples here on the left side. Okay, then, so I will also import the matplotlib in order to display the result of my output voltage, for example. Then I will load the project, which is flyback, which is the design example, DCDC flyback, which is in fact thus, this, sorry, example here. So when you write this syntax, it will directly, sorry, uh, open this example. There is a matching between Simba desktop and Simba Python iOSim library. So that's why if you say design example dot dcdc flyback, it will open this one. If you maybe call dcdc bug, it will directly go into this bug. Then we are going to make a transient analysis, obtain the the statue of this simulation. We are going to retrieve the simulation time, which is T, and the output voltage, which is R2. R2, which is a uh, flyback, which is there. R2, this is the voltage that we have defined and which is corresponding to R2. And then we are going to create a new figure named fig, okay? And we are going to set a title to this figure, and we are going also to uh, set X and Y label for time and output voltage. So once it is written, you can click on Run without debugging, and a few seconds later, as you can see, the script has been run and the output is the, the plot show. And the plot show is in fact the output voltage here of the simulation. And if you go back into Simba and run this example, I already did it. As you can see, it was almost instantaneously because Simba is very fast. You can click on R2 voltage for the flyback. And as you can see, uh, you have, yes, 
you have the output result, which is four volt around the average. And now if I compare with my Python script, which is four volt as well. So this is the same design. So of course we have the same result. Okay, but basically you can open and run a circuit like this. And one thing I forgot to tell you is first thing is you can also debug and run any of those cells step by step. You can click on run cell. And as you can see, now it is importing the iosim.simba module and importing all the examples. And now you can click on if you want run below and all those steps will be done step by step. As you can see, the importation, the run of the DC DC flyback, the time and the output voltage and the plot. So you can also observe the result into the interactive in an interactive way. But you need to write and to build some cell. And into this part, one thing I forgot to is to also show you into the pure Python, but you can do that also into the with the iosim.simba, you can debug. So when you debug, you need to add some breakpoint. And if you click on start debugging, as you can see now, you have F, which is equal to five, as you can see here. And if you go, you can step by step have access to all the values and result of the X array, Y array, and so on. So you just need to click on this step in order to debug step by step any lines if you want. And as you can see, I don't still have the value of the RMS because my breakpoint is there. It is not in the line 11. So just go next step. And now you can see the RMS value. Now, after the print capability, as you can see, the print of RMS value has been done, which is exactly this one. And now the PLT show will directly show you the curve. So I do step by step. And now I obtain this result in debug mode because I am in the line 19. So you can debug this, you can debug any of any script file if it is pure Python or use of Simba and Python together. So I can debug this file as well. Okay. So, okay. We have, <laughs> I am out of time. I'm sorry for that. I hope um, it will it will be soon uh, finished. I'm sorry for that. Okay. Um, now I want to go into the main part and which is in fact the last part of my uh, webinar. I want to show you three case studies of Simba, of the combination of Simba and the Python use. First, you can use the iosim.simba Python library in order to make some semiconductor comparison. So if I show you this slide, what we have done is very simple. As you may know, Simba is compatible with the thermal description file, which is uh, supported by a lot of semiconductors manufacturers. So basically, the thermal description file are XML. Inside the XML, you have the electro thermal aspect of the semiconductors. So based on the data inside this XML file, you will be able to estimate the losses. So for example, in, inside this XML file, you have some data about junction temperature, about voltage, about current, and this file will help the software to simulate and calculate the junction temperature, the losses, the conduction losses and switching losses. So for example, you can go into the webs, into the manufacturer of semiconductor. For example, you have Infineon, you have Volspeed, you have ROM, you have Cree. You can go into those of those manufacturers and download, if available, the XML file. And this XML file will be directly, you will have the chance to import it into Simba and Simba will recognize the syntax. And then based on this XML file, for example, for the IGBT and diode, we can calculate in an accurate way the losses. 
Of course, if you don't have the XML file, you can, and if you have some extra data, which has been performed by measurement or laboratories, you can directly import those data as well. You have the capability to do that. But the easiest way is to import the thermal description file, which will, in fact, integer all the data necessary to estimate the losses. And you can have, have access to all the data, of course. So what, what we have done is we have, I will show you directly. In two words, we have make a comparison of semiconductor files by sweeping them over the uh, a lot of um, over um, a lot of files, okay, inside the Python script, and we have performed the losses. So now, if I open the thermal data um, uh, Python script, okay, we have. 100 lines, but it is quite simple. What we have done is we have directly, uh, what the first thing is we open the thermal data file. Okay. This thermal data file is in fact a folder. And inside the folder, as you can see, we have some diode IGBT, diode IGBT, diode IGBT, and so on. Okay. So what we have done is we have opened this folder and we have swept directly all the igbt.xml file, which are those one. So we have around 10 or 12 XML, igbt xml file. And after sweeping all of those igbt, okay, we have directly extract the temperature and calculate the average losses at the end of the simulation. And we have created two figures, one for the losses, one for the temperature. And if you run in an interactive way, I will just go into the result tab. As you can see, it is importing all the module. It is running all the functions that we have defined and so on. Sweeping the value, I mean the, par the IGBTs files and so on. Once you have done that, it will directly plot into the into a, a new figure, two curves, one for the losses and one for the junction temperature. So we can wait a few seconds. And now, as you can see, we have the result of losses and junction temperature for all the Infineon IGBT, which has been swept. So manually, if you do that, you will need to go into the, this example and click on the IGBT and select this one and select another one, redo the simulation, check the result, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it is very time consuming. So in order to avoid that, we have just load this example and sweep this IGBT, okay, with different XML file. And thus XML file, as I told you, could be directly imported directly here. But this way will be the <laughs> manual way. Python will skip this and will do in automated way. So by using Python, you can import a design, import a circuit, run it, sweep any parameters. It could be IGBT, it could be a diode, it could be the switching frequency, it could be a lot of parameters that you have defined. And have a clear overview of the losses if you choose this IGBT or this one. And you can see that if you use this IGBT, you will have too much losses than if you use this one. You will have less losses, but maybe this one is a bit high co higher cost. So you need to make a trade-off between costs, between losses, and, and more parameters that you have defined uh, before. And the same for the temperature, junction temperature, observe. You can see the junction temperature based on the IGBT. So you can compare IGBT, you can compare with MOSFET, you can compare with Zeek, GAN, and so on. You can do a lot of automated uh, simulation and rank in this way the result. Then everyone can read it, not the, not the script, but directly observe the, the result. I will go fast. I'm sorry for that, guys. Then we have to uh, also a power train. We have created a power train efficiency map script. 
So as you know, powertrain is composed of a battery, an inverter for EV, I mean, and a, and a motor. And as you can see here, we can also use the XML capability to modify and to, 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 to check the efficiency, to calculate the losses and so on. But the main goal of this uh, example is we have created a kind of space of um, various speed and torque. Because as you know, in real life, you don't have a, a, a single operating point for speed and torque. Of, of course, the voltage and current will change and the torque and speed will change in uh, real life. So that's why we have swept again a, um, a, 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 a couple a, a couple of torque and speed value in order to estimate and calculate the losses. And at the end, based on the losses, you can estimate the, the efficiency. So if you run the script, which is around 200 lines, okay, at the end, it will create for you a PNG uh, picture. This kind of efficiency.png picture will be created itself and automatically, thanks to the Python iosim.simba library. And of course, we have defined some parameters, the gate resistance, switching frequency, voltage bus, and temperature case. Of course, we can change those, va those values and the efficiency will change. But basically, for those parameters, we obtain those frequency, uh, th sorry, those efficiency, which is quite high because maybe we have a bit oversized the component. But anyway, in this Python script, we have used fear weakening control, we have used maximum per torque um, ampere, uh, maximum torque per ampere uh, algorithm as well. We have done some uh, multi processing uh, simulation in order to distribute the simulation in several cores. And in our computer, we have used our 10 cores and it took five minutes for 225 cases. So it is quite short in order to create and simulate all this um, motor drive system and sweeping a lot of parameters in order to build your efficiency map. So in a very few minutes you can have this kind of graph you can also make the same work with the with the motor and you can combine both efficiency in order to have the overall efficiency of your motor drive system if you want to change the topology and if you want to make some uh, variant of your system so we do have access and you have access to this uh, to this inverter map so this is the syntax uh, and you have also access to it thanks to GitHub because we have the efficiency map right there. So if you download this example, you will be to able to run this example on your computer and observe the same result. And you can adapt it to your own system if it is something quite interesting for, for you. Um, and last thing is the LLC the last case study is an LLC converter uh, design uh, because LLC, as you know, is quite tedious, it's quite time consuming because it is highly nonlinear system and uh, we don't, you don't have one solution uh, for that. Basically, with um, for LLC design, you need to make a large sweep of of lot of parameters. You need to use, as we call, brute force, in order to make a thousand of simulation and to make different uh, modification of parameters. Because of course, you can use the first harmonic approximation uh, hypothesis in order to simplify the circuit and get a quick result of your resonant tank, of your LLC values, of the switching frequency, of the quality factor, of the uh, gain, and so on. Okay, so we do have a lot of parameters uh, and ratio, the LM over LR, and so on, ratio. And, so we do have these parameters. And you can use a traditional approach, which is FHI first harmonics approximation, or you can do brute force in order to sweep, as you can see, a lot of value. You can modify, for example, the quality factor. You can observe the maximum gain. You can 
have the normalized frequency in order to be at one at the resonant frequency. You can be above the frequency and you can be below the frequency. So basically, with our um, script that we have designed, uh, you can do this kind of simulation in order to extract the best gain, I mean, the gain and the resonant tank, the LLC value based on your uh, specification. So you can ob obtain the best uh, design of your LLC thanks to the Python script because you will be able to sweep uh, um, a lot of gain, frequency, and so on. And basically, we have done uh, more than 8,000 simulation in less than six minutes with our cores, with the 10 cores computer. So it is quite fast because we have the predictive time step solver, which is quite new into a simulation, into, in, into, the, into this simulation software. It is a new technology. We have also used the steady state detection and we have used the Python API and parallel computation, thanks to the parallel processing computation. And we have studied uh, the frequency range, we have studied uh, the quality factor and so on. And at the end, we have obtained the parameters needed in order to match our uh, requirement. And also, this may be, uh, you remember, but this LLC converted this LLC converter design was uh, a previous webinar. So if you want to have access to this webinar in a uh, more uh, with more details and explanation, we can give you also the link and uh, and have access to the video uh, directly if you if you are interested in this. But of course, the script is available and you can have access to 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 this design and which can help very useful and helpful. So in conclusion, um, Python could be a real replacement for your Excel spreadsheet and MATLAB script, because in one tool, you can do anything. And the combination of IOSIM, Simba, Python library, and Python will help you to design, to automate, and to make some optimization part. We have some example which can help you to use the SciPy module in order to optimize your system based on the algorithm which has been created. You can obtain the PI value automatically. You can tune them like this. And basically, with Python, you don't have any limits because it is programming language. So if you have anything in your head, you can just put into Python and simulate. So you will have no limit with uh, Python and Simba altogether. We have a lot of resources, as I told you, on the website and also on GitHub. You can have access to them for free and you can run them and and uh, have your own experience and and modify those ones in order to match your needs. We plan to also schedule and organize some training in September. So on my side, I will present, I will do a training uh, of Python. It would be two complete days dedicated to, to, to Python. It will be uh, in REOP, and we plan also to do that in USA and uh, India. If you're interested, feel free to, to, to register. So maybe the promotion is, has already started, but it will be done soon if it is not the case. And uh, you will have a very uh, good overview about what is Python, how to use it, how the basics of Python, and how to use the, the iOSIM.Simba. So, it is a two days full training on Python with Simba. And also we have an aggressive and open roadmap because as I told you, every three, every trimester, we have new a new release of Simba with new features and we improve Simba based on your guys' uh, needs. So feel free to go on GitHub and go into the public roadmap and to help us to, 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 to improve this software for you. So, I'm sorry, it, we are out of time. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, oh, this uh, webinar. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can note my uh, email address. Uh, we, uh, we can dedicate a few
you I mean five minutes for question and if you have other question you can uh, contact us later and we will be uh, pleased to help you and to provide you a trial license if you want to test it of course and we will support you okay um okay I don't okay I am checking the question uh, okay first question for the power electronic simulation what is different from the existing simulation tools such as MATLAB simulating plex etc or what is new features for it uh, first as you have seen Simba is uh, dedicated to Python because even if it is Simba or other competitors sometimes you cannot do what you want because sometimes the feature is not existing or maybe the feature is missing and maybe you want to do some advanced work that you cannot do with the actual features so with the Python as I told you, it is no limit. So if you want to make some automation that you can do in other software, if you want to make some optimization with algorithm predefined and which are already e existing, you can directly download and import the, the, the module, the library, and use it with, uh, with a Python capability. And maybe you have seen that those free uh, LLC design converter automatically is not available yet in Simba desktop. So you can do that with Simba. The sweep of uh, this uh, thermal or parameters value, again, could not be done, I mean, automatically in Simba. So what you can do is do it this with um, with Python, because maybe you will be interested in thermal part and you will need to select the best choice of component. So rather than to make maybe 12 simulation manually and waste your time and write the value of the losses, you can do that very easily with one script to do everything. And also build a kind of efficiency map. So this is one example, but of course you can go into this website in the GitHub in order to show, and the, this example will help you to how to make some parallel parallel parameter sweep, because you cannot do parallel parallel simulation in Simba desktop. You can do that only with the Python part. If you want to boost and reduce simulation time, you can optimize your uh, your PID value of your bug power converters. So this could not be done automatically in I think any simulation software in an automatic way, I say. But with the SciPy module and Python, you can let the algorithm work for you and optimize the parameters of your PID, but it could be any other parameters. And you can make also some AC frequency analysis in an automatic way in order to compare the theory against Simba, for example, or against your measurement in laboratory, you can do that Auto, rather than to import an Excel and to import an Excel from measurement, export an Excel from Simba and match both uh, Excel into one, it is time consuming. You can do that in Simba directly with simple line of code. So these are examples which can help you to save your time and ease your life. And also the, the solver, it is different than the competition. So the predictive time step solver has been created and optimized in order to save your life. Basically, you have access to the documentation on the Simba.io website. If you go on simulation engine here, you will have the description of the uh, solver and all the steps which has been included in order to have the in order to have a very fast simulation. And the goal of this is to be the fattest of the world, basically. So feel free to read this, but the algorithm is totally different than the uh, competition. So Simba is replacing PSIM. No, Simba is a new competitors of PSIM, of Plex, 
uh, of uh, simply symmetrics and so on. So basically, uh, Simba is another software with a new GUI, with a new uh, new component, with new functionalities. And we have the online, we have the Python version, we have the desktop. You don't need to install it. You don't have any simulation installation. I mean, you don't. You don't have any installation issue, so it is another tool with uh, other features. It is completely different. Uh, can Simba have Excel file as input and or output files? Yes, you can uh, import C Simba, uh, sorry, CSV file here if you want. Uh, if you have uh, already some result and compare with with the simulation, so you can import CSV file here and you can directly click on this button and you can directly export the uh, CSV uh, data as well. Um, yeah, so in the result tab, you can import those file, but uh, no, you cannot. Um, if you open a project, uh, of course, you can import a gsimba file. Okay, this is a project. And if you have a PCM circuit, this is you know the PCM SCH circuit, you can easily uh, import the netlist of the PCM extension. So in PCM, if you know, you can go on generate tab generate uh, netlist XML. So PCM will generate the netlist and you can, if you want, import the XML uh, directly in Simba and Simba will recreate automatically the circuit of PCM. And then you can make your simulation in PCM and you, in, sorry, in Simba and you can also uh, use the Simba and Python advantage for more advanced work and automation. So actually, if you have a PV inverter, no. We plan to do that also to import CSV file into the design, but you cannot import CSV file into the design. The importation is just into the, the, the result uh, part. But we plan to add a PV model. We plan to add a battery model as well, and in which you can import some extra uh, data. Uh, do I did I use Simba in power system load flow analysis purpose? Uh, yes, you can, of course, but you will need to build your own system, your own circuit, and yes, you can do use uh, Simba for this kind of application, and also for uh, yeah for motor drive. Yeah. The recording, yes, it will be available soon. So my colleague from marketing will uh, share with you the, the, the recording. And the slide, I think we can also share it with you into a PDF file. Um, a list of the Python module mentioned will be useful. Yes. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, maybe you know this. I don't know. This is PyP or PyPy, I don't know how we can pronounce that, but this is the Python package index. This website is gathering all the uh, module libraries and tools available inside Python. As you can see, as, I'm sorry, it is written in French, but it is profile, file, version, and project. So basically, you have a large number of files, projects, and version uh, of that people because it is a um, it is a community. So basically, any one of you uh, and anybody in the world can build a module, a library, and integrate this into this website. So if you type I sim Simba, you can find what we have build the iosim.simba Python library in order to use Simba with Python. So, and as it is mentioned, you just need to click on pip install iosim.simba. So if you type co uh, command line and pip install iosim.simba, sorry, 
I have put dollar. Sorry, my mistake. As you can see, it it is I cannot download it because I have already downloaded it, but I can upgrade it. But basically I have this version. So if you type this line, it will install automatically because it will go directly through this website and it, in, it will install. So now if you want to have a complete list, uh, yes, we can. Uh, you can type uh, SciPy, for example. This is a algorithm for scientific computation in Python. This one, so you just need to type pip install SciPy. You have matplotlib as well, which is for data visualization. Uh, you have uh, NumPy, which is for numerical uh, calculation, mathematical uh, calculation. Uh, you have also Seaborn, it is also for data statistical visualization. You have Plotty, yeah, again for simulation and uh, plot any um, any parameters. Uh, and you have also Bokeh, Bokeh, which is another kind of uh, interactive plot, uh, yeah, which is quite useful. So we do have this, but in most of our examples, which are available on GitHub, we use NumPy, so NumPy, and sorry, and uh, and Matplotlib, sorry, yeah, Matplotlib and NumPy. And if you run a, a script which has another module which has not been installed in your computer you will get an error and it will say maybe bokeh is not available with bokeh is not installed so you should just you need to to write pip install and bokeh and it will install in a few seconds basically what do you mean by unlimited calculation so it means that if you have a, 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 a I read the question, is single license enough for Yeah, 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 yeah. Is single license is enough for unlimited number of computers? Yes. Is one time payment based on every year? Okay. First, when I say par, um, unlimited calculation, it means if you have 10 cores on your computer, you will be able to use the 10 cores to simulate your circuit. Of course, if it is a flyby core, simple topology you don't need to use 10 cores you can use only one course because it is needed it is sufficient is enough so for example if i uh yes simulate this bug as you can see it is instantaneously it is already done maybe you didn't see it but it is the, the, the time right now okay uh but if you use as we have as i have mentioned um, something which needs to make a sweep of a lot of parameters in order to build something more complex or to design something in order to sweep and make a brute force simulation with thousands of simulation. If you use one course, it will take maybe one or two hours. I don't know. We didn't try because this parallel simulation is, is available with Python. And you don't need to pay extra thing, okay? And with this, you can make and save your time. So it is unlimited because you can use your uh, cores and you can decrease the simulation time. Uh, yes, one license is enough to simulate. Uh, yeah, one license could is is sufficient to simulate in a parallel way. And uh, yeah, if you purchase Simba, so I, I answer the question about the payment. Uh, if you purchase Simba, you, if you purchase it, it will be a permanent license. So it means you you purchase it one time, you have it for all the life. And of course, you if you want to get the maintenance, if you want to have access to the support and so on, you need to pay the maintenance. But the maintenance is uh, cheaper than the price of the of the license, of course. So no issue on that. Uh, in Anaconda software, Simba is there. Um, 
I'm I don't understand the question. Uh, yes, maybe um, I think Anaconda. I don't know well this module, but uh, yes, if this module is available with Python, you can use both Simba and Anaconda. And uh, yeah, okay. Need uh, okay. Um, if you need to have some trial, you need to contact us. You need to contact uh, us directly and we will create with you your trial license. So contact us directly uh, because there is a small process and uh, and then uh, you, we will give you the, a link and you will need to create an account on Simba website and you can download the software. But you need to, 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 to contact us before. Can the model of the component be edited? Are there parameters that can be adapted. Um, when you say edit, okay. When you say edited, um, sorry, you mean if you want to have access to the to the information. So, form. Okay. First, you can build your own subcircuit. So, if you have some subcircuit, you can check what is inside. But if you don't have any. Um, Subcircuit, and you just want to check what is inside. For simple component, the only thing you can do you can do is just modify the parameter value. You we don't have the capability to go inside the inside of the parameters. I think this is your question. So no, you you can uh, you can edit if you have the capability. For example, for the okay here for this um, control part. The phase shift controller part you can edit because you can click on open and have access to the C code. You can uh, have access to the component, but some of those components are quite uh, simple component and don't require to edit them. But again, it depends maybe of the component. It depends of your needs. Uh, but basically, the only thing you, that you can do is modify uh, such parameters here in order to modify and tune uh, them. And the description, if you click on help here, the description of the component will be shown directly through the Simba website because we have the documentation. And if you go into this tab, uh, you can di directly have access to the information, to the details of the component that you have uh, clicked on help. Uh, okay, do you provide some translation models between other software simulink or Plex to your software or do we have to do it ourselves? Um, basically, we only provide the capability to open PSIM files. We don't have the capability to, to import simulink or Plex circuits, so no. For those software, you will need to redo it uh, yourself manually. Uh, yeah, of course we can help you if you test uh, Simba and so on. We can help you, and you can we can yeah, help any people who wants to test and convert some circuit from another software to into Simba. But no, we don't have an automated uh, tool actually. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can we okay? Can, can we manage IP data using Python API of Simba? First, this is not an API because the software itself has been Simba itself has been encapsulated into the iosim.simba uh, module, if I can say this. So it's not directly an, an API. As I told you, you can all the functionalities available in Simba desktop could be redo with a Python uh, capability. So it's not an API, but yes, you, you can manage any data, anything. I don't know if I have well understood your question. I hope if not, you can ask with more detail. Uh, when Simba is free, when do I know the license? 
uh, Simba could be free only for academics and partnership with university. But for that, I am not the right guy because I'm not involved in the sales. But yes, uh, you can have free license if if we have a partner with the university, and uh, yeah, you have some condition to respect uh, for having a, a free license of Simba. Uh, FOC can be implemented for PMSN using Simba. Yes, of course. So actually, the, the feed-oriented control block has not been yet created in Simba. So if you know the, the, the blocks which build the feed-oriented control block, I mean system, you can build manually in Simba. It is possible. I think we have most of the parameters in order to design any power converters and make any control loop. But the most complex thing is to build the, 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 the control part, if I can say like this. So if you know the value of each block and if you know which blocks are involved in order to build your own feed onto the control uh, subcircuit, for example, you can do that, of course. We don't have it actually. We plan to do that also later. But as I told you, with the uh, inverter map, maybe I can show you with Python. Again, I am talking about Python because this is the goal of this webinar. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Yes, we have added the flux weakening uh, um, algorithm by using Python script, by using code, and the MPTA as well. We have both MPTA and field weakening control. So in a similar way, we can reproduce the field oriented uh, control. It is possible. And as you can see, we can also use multiprocessing because you don't need to pay an extra thing. It is everything is uh, so basically if you purchase one day Simba, everything will be available. The Simba online, the Simba desktop and the Simba Python. One license for doing everything and you don't need to purchase a four cores modular because it doesn't exist. You have just to use the multiprocessing line and it will just do in parallel way your, your simulation. So one license for doing everything, no extra thing. The extra thing is just the, the, the maintenance if you decide to have every year the maintenance contract. But I think you do something similar to for uh, other software. Already email, but no response. Uh, I don't know to which email you have written, uh, but I can. I think you have you have a, you have the marketing email, so the marketing will email will contact us. Uh, I mean, will forward the question to us, but you can also contact me uh, directly there if you want. And depending on where you are located, I will forward to uh, the people in USA or India because I am taking care about the Rio, but no issue, we have few offices uh, in the world and two offices in India and USA, so uh, we manage all the world. So sorry if you have, if you didn't receive any answer from us, uh, feel free to contact me if you want and we, I can, uh, we can be in touch. Okay, I think I have answer to everyone. If something is not clear or maybe needs to have more um, details, feel free to contact us. I'm sorry for the time. It is uh, one hour and 40 minutes. But uh, I hope it was interesting, useful, and maybe you will need and you will have the chance to, to, to test Simba soon and the Python because with Python, you can do unlimited and a lot of things that you can maybe do in your actual uh, software. So, and also, as I told you, Simba is new in the market. So it has been released two years ago. So we have a strong user database, but again, we, we, we rely on customers for improving the software. So thanks to you guys for attending thanks to you guys for uh, improving and helping us to improve the, the software i hope it was yeah uh, interesting for you and you have learned a lot of things thanks everyone uh, we close this session and the recording and files will be available soon and feel free to contact us again and 
thanks for being a Poersys and Simba users if you are. And for the other one, maybe you will join us soon and be part of the community of Poersys. So thanks everyone. Thanks to you guys. I wish you a good day and see you another day. Bye bye, Tim. Bye bye.